I want to start this week 16 out thanking all of our partners. Partners, thank you for helping us do what God has commissioned us to do all over this world, and that is to teach people just how much God loves them, just how much He's for them, and just how much He wants them to know who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you, over everything that you sow into this ministry. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, all that you have done, and all that you're going to do in the future to help us further God's kingdom. Glory to God. Now, this has been 16. This is the start of 16 weeks that we've been on this study. This is the, this is the last week of the fourth month that we've been in this study. Can you believe we've been in this this long and and every day, five days a week in this study, growing in who we are in Jesus Christ? You get stronger and stronger every day. The the more that you study these scriptures, and I want to encourage you, if this is the, the first or the second week or the fourth week that you've been on this study, go back to June the 21st of 2021 and get in this study with us and, and, and go through the complete study and find out who you are. Because I promise you, if you'll find out who you are, it will, it'll completely change your outlook on your Christian life. I'm, I am convinced. I don't, I don't think it. I don't, I don't uh, you know, think, well, maybe this is the problem. I'm convinced that the, that the church as a whole is lacking this one thing, and that is knowing who they are and who they have been promised they are through, his, through God's Word, that, that, they are, that they are strong in Him, that they come to know that and understand that. I, I, I'm, I'm convinced people don't know that. If, they, if the church knew who they were in Jesus Christ and the promises that God has made them through His Word, I promise you, we, we, would, we would see the world, we would see the world born again in just a short period of time. They, people don't know it, though. They're defeated. They're walking in fear and, and torment and con- condemnation and shame. Because they they walk around trying to do things on their own, trying to live a Christian life on their own. And I promise you, if I, if I know anything about my life in the last six or seven years, I know that, that this knowledge that I'm giving you on these, on these uh, studies has changed my life. And I know if it changed mine, it will change yours. Now, let's see what what we can find out this week about who we are in Him. You know, I do these prayers every time I do this podcast for a reason. I want the world to know what Paul wanted the Ephesians to know, that God loves them, that He cares for them, that He wants more than anything to be part of their lives. And and that's what Paul's desire was for the Ephesians. And I've adopted these prayers so that you and the world that we live in, every person, including myself, every person that, that walks the face of this planet comes to see and understand just how much God loves them. Ephesians 1.15 says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. 
Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to be in Colossians, the second chapter today. And the third verse. Now, I want to I talk to you about something that that a lot of people, you know, they kind of shy away from it, or whatever you want to say, but they kind of shy away from it because they don't feel like that they measure up. But let me read this verse. It says, In whom are in Jesus, in, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, I want to make a statement. The Bible talks about us having the mind of Christ. If we're born again, we have the mind of Christ. And you say, boy, I don't know if I do or not. I mean, I I don't, I'm not not, uh, that versed on the Bible. I'm not, you know, I'm not... Uh, strong in who I am. I understand that. I want I want you to know I understand what you're talking about. But if you've been born again, you have the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in you. And when He came to take up His abode in you, He brought He brought everything that you need. That to live a godly life, a strong life, a, a victorious life. I heard I heard a preacher say this one time, and and it is so true. He said he said I I desired as a young man to know what God wanted me to know. He said I said to myself if I can figure out what God wants for my life, he said I've got it made. And that is so true. And he did find it out. I mean, that, that you know, there's not a doubt in my mind he's where God wanted him to be. And, and that, is, that all comes from listening to our hearts, listening to the Holy Spirit that, guide, that, that guides and dwells in us, and, and renewing our, our, our carnal mind with God's Word. You say, well, you said we had the mind of Christ. We do. We do, but we've got to learn to listen to it. And I'm no, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, godly thoughts don't come out of your head. They come out of your heart. And, and they come by the Holy Spirit being able to draw on what, what God has, has, has uh, indwelling in you and what you have put in you to, to, for Him to draw on. You know, I've told this story over and over. I told it the other day at a church, you know, but it's so true. When when I first started going to the jail here in Bradley County, when I first started going to the jail, I, I uh, was taken there by a, 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 a great man of faith. His name is Alan Crider, and he, I mean, is a, just an outstanding uh, minister, a uh, Christian, just an, just a good person all the way around, and I love him dearly. And when when we first when I first met him, he said, "Now, Stacy," he said, "I don't I don't want you to uh, I don't want to speak fear in you. I don't want to do anything that's going to uh, uh, invoke fear into you." But he said, "I want you to listen to me." He said, "I want you to to know and understand that there's some bad people in this place, and you need to watch your back, pay attention to what's going on around you, and and 
make sure that you watch what you're doing. He just didn't want me getting hurt, and I understand that. But I told him the other day at this church, I said, listen, I said, you, you may tell you what God spoke to my heart, what come up out of me when he said that. Uh, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It just It just welled up in me. Why? Because it was there. I had put it there, and the Holy Spirit brought it to my mind. Out of the mind of Christ, I, I, I gathered up all the wisdom and the knowledge, the treasures of that wisdom and knowledge. Do you realize how, what kind of treasure that is? To know that you have the mind of Christ and, and, and have the, the, the ability to find out anything that you need to know if you listen. If you listen, the, tr- the wisdom and the knowledge that God has for us, I'm telling you what, a, a, a Harvard education couldn't get it for you. I- I'm serious. I- I'm, I'm going to tell you something. The, the time that I spent in this greenhouse in front of my house, I'm telling you that a Harvard education couldn't, give them, couldn't have given me what God gave me in that greenhouse. I'm going to be honest with you. He couldn't. There's no way that Harvard or Yale or Princeton or any other prestigious school that you know of, Georgetown or wherever you, you, you think that there's prestige in that education, I, couldn't, he, I could never get what God has given me in His Word. In His Word, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge have been given me through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, through His Word, through the strength that He has given me in His Word, to stand up and know who I am. Honey, that's a treasure that you, that, that's, a, that's a knowledge and, a, and, and wisdom that you will never, ever get from this world. Like I said, treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Him, in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You can, you can find out anything you need to know if you'll just listen. Pray, study, study God's Word, hear it, hear it, hear it over and over in your mind. Speak it out loud, read it out loud to yourself so you can get hold of what God's Word is saying to you. And if you'll do that, there ain't nothing in this world that you can't find out. I promise you that. I... I, I I was sitting at a Bible study last night, and and I wanted to tell the story, but I just I talked so much that I didn't didn't think I needed to. But I'll tell you, I when we when when we done this greenhouse down here, I've got a greenhouse on my property that's it's three thousand square feet. It's a hundred feet long, thirty feet wide, and it's got a ten thousand gallon aquaponic system on the inside of it. Hadn't run since two thousand and seventeen. But from the, from the end of 2014, I started building that greenhouse. A friend of mine, Ronnie Cates, helped me build this thing. And, and we got it all together and built out. And then uh, uh, my son and some of his friends helped me put the gravel in it. They put the gravel in it, really. And then I started working on it, building it, making it work. And... The not just this is just carnal knowledge. Now this is nothing that has to do with spiritual things. This was just something that I needed to know about running this this system, and I built this system, and and well I say I built it. The Lord built it. I promise you that. And after after about a year of getting it up and running, making sure everything was going right, you know it was all running just perfect. And there was a man walked into this greenhouse and he looked at it and saw it run and saw everything in there running the way it the way it did and and he looked at me and said who engineered this for you <laughs> and I kind of laughed I, I said the Lord watched after my ignorance I said I done all this you know he helped me do it I mean I'm telling you that thing would run flawlessly on one pump the the and and what it what people didn't see and understand is that the beds would fill up and they would drain and they'd fill up and they would drain and it all ran 
through valves. It didn't run. It didn't run by timers and machines turning on and off. This water constantly flowed, and and those beds would fill up and they would drain, and they'd fill up and they would drain, and and it just ran like a top. Grew some of the ve- best vegetables, fruits, and and uh, pineapples, and tomatoes, and and cucumbers, and we grew corn that touched the top of the greenhouse. I mean, it's just unreal what what we we uh, done in that greenhouse, and it all come out of my heart because I assure you that first year that I built that thing, I prayed, I studied, I listened to God's word, and He spoke to my heart. The things that I needed that to to make that thing work, he knew my heart, he knew what I was trying to do, and he helped me and that's what I want you to understand today uh, that a Christian life is not just going to church and reading your bible and and all this other stuff because God knows you have to live life, and when you get out here in this world and something comes up that you need his help, guess what? He's going to help you. I promise you he'll help you. You've got treasures of wisdom and knowledge in him, in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And it all comes out of his word, out of your inner man. It will come out and, and, and feed you and give you what you need. I've got a proprietary a valve system or dump system, siphon system, if you would say, that that nobody else I've ever seen it in the world work that that it works the way this one did, and he just it just it just come to my to my mind. He said, "Do this." I done it, and it was a problem. It was a problem. I couldn't figure out how to make it work consistently, and and that one little piece stuck in there. And a hose run into the bottom of that tank, cleared up all the problems, and it ran flawlessly for three years. I'm talking about just flawlessly. Three years, never had a bobble one time, other than a few uh, hoses getting clogged up with roots and stuff like that. Just, Just maintenance. But I'm telling you, whatever you need... Now, the the Bible talks about it. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And and he's talking about life, and that that talks about your carnal life, too. This is talking about what God wants you to do in this world. I'm not talking about in in your in your Christian walk, I'm talking about to make a living, to to do what you what you need to do to succeed in life. He'll help you, and it all comes out of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I can't emphasize that enough. God has helped me see things through my lifetime, through the last six years of my life, that you would not believe what things that He has shown me how to figure out. And it has been through prayer, through through guidance. Lord, show me. I know you know. Show me. You lose something. Don't go and fall into a panic. Lord, show me where it's at. Help me, and then get quiet and listen. Listen. Treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. That's where it's going to come from. It's going to come from God's Word. It's going to come from the Holy Spirit that guides you. It's going to help you and strengthen you. But you got to believe it. you got to receive it. you got to listen for God to tell you what to do. Now listen, I want to ask you something today. Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Do you know that, that, that uh, Jesus is Lord of your life? Because if you don't, it's as easy as, as uh, just a one statement, one statement. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. Do you believe God is who he says he is? Do you believe God sent Jesus Christ down here on this earth to die for your sins so that he could raise him for for your justification on the third day? Because if you believe all that, you're one step away. You're one statement of way away from being saved, being born again. And that statement is to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life out loud with your mouth. 
Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Be born again today, and then find the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and he'll show them to you. I promise you, he'll give you everything you need to succeed in this life. Be born again today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today, and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. Listen to me. If you got a prayer request, send it to us. I want to hear from you. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's going to answer your prayer. Hey, if you if you got a prayer request, I want to agree with you according to God's word on that prayer request. Send them to us. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now listen, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is to give his love away, give his word away all over this world free of charge. Partners, I thank you for sowing into this ministry. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Whether you're a partner or whether you're not, sow these, these podcasts onto your social media. Give them away so others can be set free through the truth in God's Word so they can find out who they are in Jesus Christ. But if you're not a partner, pray about becoming one. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into this ministry to help us further His kingdom, to help us further people getting into his kingdom, finding out who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, or finding out that they need salvation and it is free of charge to them. All they've got to do is receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Confess him as Lord of their life. Won't you do that today? Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.